Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Dan Tremblay Music. Today we are once again exploring the Arctic tundra of tundra. Um, just one of my favorite libraries. Um, I try to uh, choose different sounds from it as much as possible. So using a few different patches that I haven't used before, creating something different, creating something off the grid, kind of organic not to a click track, not quantized. So let's get to it. So the last couple of videos that I've made um, I've been trying to focus on maybe one particular library because um, maybe some of you are watching the channel. You know, you only have a couple of libraries. Maybe you're just getting started. Um, so I'm still a piano player, though, obviously. So um, pretty much starting every project with uh, Native Instruments, Noir, Piano. You're probably sick of hearing that now. But so versatile and... Uh, so that's what we're doing. So I have two instances of Noir Piano. And uh, and then the rest are tracks 3 through 10 are all from Tundra. So this is all Tundra. Um, I've done a couple of videos like this on Tundra already. But um, I'm always trying to use different patches. Show some different capabilities of the library. So let's go through it. So um, this was one of those tracks that I did that is completely off the grid. No quantization. Um, I didn't play to a click track. Nothing is lined up. Everything is literally just um, played live. And um, I'm not sure I even did more than one. Um, there's no overdubs. Uh, pretty much just straight out of the box. So you'll, you'll hear if you listen to it very carefully that it's, it's, not, it's not even close to being perfect, nor is it supposed to be. It's just kind of organic and the layers are kind of folding around each other. And um, I love doing tracks like this and just getting away from the click track and getting away from matching everything up and the rhythms. And uh, it's, it's, it's very freeing. And uh, it's interesting the different kind of emotions that you're able to convey by doing this process. So highly recommended. So the track, let's, let's start with uh, actually right here. Tundras, this is from the uh, from the Steam folder. Um, this is called Fireflies um, Flutter. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Okay, this, the reason I'm starting here is because this is the sound that started the track. If you've been watching this channel, you'll know that I'm always looking for a sound to spark something and this was the one um, I wanted to start with the steam pad uh, I just kind of messed around and I found this one right away and it just it's just you know and the thing is about the steams uh, about the pads is they just go and carry and carry and then the sound changes and changes um, so they're just so versatile. Um, that's what I love about this. So I almost always am using, you know, um, pads and stuff like that and mixing them with strings. So that's what started the track. Uh, so that's that sound. And from there, I think I immediately went to Noir Piano. And I literally, this is kind of an unusual thing to do, but um, I follow the, uh, you know, the scroll um, and when I see where I've kind of changed notes and chords in here, I try to line up some of those changes with the piano and I record it live and I don't try to nail every single one. Uh, I just try to do something interesting. So anyway. You know, Noir Piano, just magnificent sound. Native Instruments should send me like a care package or something like that because I go on and on about it. Anyway, Native Instruments, if you're listening, uh, you know, send me some stuff. Um, so I think that was the second track that I did. Um, and then we're going to come back to the... Uh, well, I guess we can go back to here. So uh, I added this a little bit later into the track, but it is Tundra Woods 
um, and it is called Lou, sorry, Woods Low, and it is the Super Air patch. So to me, Tundra is all about the air, and this is just one of those patches that just there's all these th things going on and sounds and um anyway really cool and then as always i i record the part straight up i'm i'm literally doing uh fifth intervals of fifths if anybody uh, anybody does a uh, theory music theory out there just fifths kind of a pulsing fifth um and then i sculpted that afterwards with the uh, modulation and dynamics to try to make it a little bit more interesting always do that after the fact uh, then we have another, uh, no, we talked about that already, sorry. We, then we added uh, strings low, soft, and wild. And uh, I didn't say what patch that we used. Uh, the Solsis. Solsis. All right, so let's listen to that. Let's do a little bit of that. So just kind of moving up basically like a minor third uh, progression. Same thing, try to really sculpt all those transitions after the fact. And then we added some, uh, some high strings and the Flout CS Consordino patch. Let's listen to that. So again, very, very, very similar to the last track, but as you can see, they're two separate tracks. Again, they kind of just weave around each other. And then, uh, what do we get in here? Some, some Tundra Brass Low, and it's actually the Fluttered patch, which I don't think I've used before, but anyway, I thought it was kind of kind of fun. So I just added it right, just kind of like a build up. It's kind of like an accent on the end. Let's check that out. It's bad. And then uh, again, just towards the end, I added the strings low main double stop in uh, fifths. Okay, so because this is a patch that has two duplicate uh, pitches simultaneously, you gotta be kind of careful with how you use it. Otherwise it's not gonna work in your mix. Um, so, but you pretty much just want to kind of stick to um, just, just using one key because Every time you hit the one key, it's going to play two different patches or two different uh, pitches, excuse me, at the same time. So let's check that out. Very, very nice uh, usable sound. It's from the Jarva, the Jarva pads folder. And it's called the Arctic Chorus 2 uh, MW Mod Wheel is Rain. Okay. Um, and uh, again, just kind of like that pulsing sort of thing. This is a huge patch. So you got, again, you got to be careful with it. As you can see, I'm using just like one note at a time because it's just a huge, massive, it'll just eat up your entire um, frequency spectrum. So you got to be careful with these ones. So but let's check this out. Menacing. Don't you feel like you're in the Arctic now? Uh, so I just kind of slowly, slowly built that up. And then I started to play more than one note again for that build up towards the end. But if I had played, for instance, um, chords, you know, let's say like uh, two or three notes in the right hand, a couple notes in the left hand, um, 
I think you'd find that it would really start to kind of interfere with the early part of the composition. So these huge pads, you really got to kind of got to keep them in check. And then, um, so Darwin percussion is free, is uh, included in not all of the Albions. Um, and probably, to be honest with you, I've used it mostly in the uh, the Albion 1 and then the Legacy version. Um, I think it's still in the Albion 1, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, anyway, that's when I've used it. It's they're, they're not huge folders, but whatever's in there is really, really useful. Um, this is literally just kind of like a sub bass kind of thing, which I, I literally just duplicated it, as you can see, so it would match up with that Java Arctic chorus, just to give a little kind of sub accent to it. So let's listen to that. You might not be able to hear it as much as you might be able to feel it, depending on what your headphones are looking like. Yeah, it's good. Just a, just a little bit of, of an accent in there. And uh, and then I think towards the end, I took another, I duplicated my uh, Noir piano track and I just added a couple of little extra textures in, in a high range, uh, like up an octave over top of the low piano part. Again, nothing is quantized, nothing is matched up, no click track. Things are just kind of dancing and swirling around each other. And I think that is pretty much for it for this one. So as you can see, Kept, kept the track count very, very low. Uh, use only as many tracks as you need to to get your emotion across. Do I need to use 100 tracks to create an emotion? Remember, the more tracks that you use, the harder that's going to be to mix um, and the smaller the sound is going to get. Everybody knows that. If you, you know, Every time you hear like a really big, um, seemingly loud track, usually it's a lower track count unless you know you got like the best mix engineers in the world that can put everything just in place but people like us um i think to keep it simple i think less is more uh these people that use you know 100 tracks there's nothing wrong with using 100 tracks by the way for your project that's how many you need to use that's fine for me i try to be a minimalist that's just the sound that i'm going for and I'm also always keeping in mind the kind of music that I write um, is meant to be placed underneath something, maybe underneath dialogue, underneath a picture. And that's just the kind of music that I write. So the more that's in there, the more it's going to detract from everything else that's going on um, if you're trying to pair it with a visual medium. So that's my that's my process. Um, there's, there's no EQ on any of this stuff. There's no reverb out of anything threw on my uh, ozone plugin just to get a little bit of limiter at the end uh, bring it up a little bit and uh, I did automate a couple of things literally only two things one is just so I could sneak the tundra steam fireflies in at the beginning and um, there was a little pedal noise which I'm sure I could fool around with more piano and get rid of the pedal noise but whatever um, I just wanted to fade it out at the end so I didn't have that pedal noise right at the end um, I'm sure there's a thousand different ways to do it. That was it for automation. So no external reverbs, delays, there's no EQ. Just It's supposed to sound kind of like just like a, a wall of kind of air with sound kind of swirling around. And that's what I was trying to create. Um, so that's pretty much it with this, uh, with this one. So I'll play it and then we'll have some final thoughts. Here we go.
Final thoughts. I like to think of myself as a minimalist. What is the fewest number of tracks and sounds that I need in order to convey my emotion or my idea? Um, and sometimes even that's too much and I'll pull it back. Very rarely do I add things. Um, I like less, I like more space. I'm always trying to think of it in the, from a visual perspective. If this song was being played paired with a visual medium, how would it work? And I always try to have that in mind when I'm writing stuff because that's the type of stuff that I like to write, uh, I write from a visual perspective. So less is more, keep your track counts down um, and use only the number of sounds that you need for your project. And maybe it's 60, maybe it's 70, maybe it's 100, maybe it's 200. I'm not sure, I guess it depends on what the project is. But if you're trying to write music that's gonna be paired with a visual medium, then again, I think less is more. Um, just enough to get your emotion and your subject or your idea across. So I hope you enjoyed it. I got some exciting things coming up. I'm still working on my Christopher Norton uh, mixing project, which is ongoing. The library music project is ongoing. And um, I have all kinds of ideas uh, for songs, kind of pop songs that have been kicking around. And uh, I'd like to uh, start to push those out the door. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It really helps me in determining um, who's enjoying the channel, um, who's watching it. And uh, I love your comments, love the feedback. Keep it coming. Stay safe, my friends. Catch you in the next one.